Hello and welcome to Darwin's God. In this video I want to talk about determinism and why it's so important. It's not for the reason that you probably think. So let's have a look here. I'll use Sabina Hassenfelder on this simply because she's blogged on this and many people agree with what she's saying. So what does she say? She says everything is driven by the laws of nature. So imagine you have a set of particles at time one. You can predict and compute what that's going to look like at time two by the laws of nature. She gives the example of your brain. Uh, here's what she writes. We've got these laws of nature and she says they operate by differential equations. Okay, fine. Um, if you knew the exact details of the particles in your brain and all of your brain's inputs, then using these laws of nature you can compute and calculate what happens at any other moment in time from those initial conditions. So your brain is basically like a set of particles. She then takes this next step. This means in a nutshell that the whole story of the universe in every single detail was determined already at the Big Bang. We are just watching it play out. Okay, So everything is predetermined from 13 billion years ago uh, using these laws of nature you can pr predict the particles of the universe. Therefore there's no free will because we're just a set of particles. Now what's important about this is that Hassenfelder and her fellow determinists are not saying that this is a theory. They're saying this is truth. Very high claims. So here's some examples here. Uh, these deterministic laws of nature apply to you and your brain because you are made of particles. So it's not uh, a maybe or could be, it is. She's stating it as a matter of fact. Skipping down, um, if you disagree with her, she says, you would be denying the scientific evidence. We do not guess, we know. Again, we do not guess, we know that we can derive from these laws. So this is not a hypothesis for these determinists. Hassenfelder is using uh, language of certainty, language of conviction. Again here, skipping down, if you make a claim to the contrary, if you don't agree with me, you're contradicting well-established science. So this is from science, we know this for sure, not a hypothesis. And then lastly, you will never understand how the universe really works. Again, the language of certainty, conviction. So what does this mean for free will? Well, it's meaningless for Hassenfelder and determinists. In fact, it's entirely meaningless. That word entirely is important here because, again, it reinforces the certainty. It's entirely meaningless and indeed makes no sense. Okay, So where's the problem with this? Uh, let's look at this quote here again. The whole story of the universe in every single detail was determined already at the Big Bang. We're just watching it play out. Um, if this was a scientific hypothesis, then yeah, give it a check mark, a green check mark. Nothing wrong with scientific hypotheses, but that's not what's going on. They're not saying this is a hypothesis. It's a truth that's known from science. That is a false claim. Now be careful here. I'm not saying that the determinism is false. I'm not saying that that quote there is false. The whole story of the universe in every single detail was determined already at the Big Bang. We're just watching it play out. That might be true. It might be false. No one knows. Uh, that's a deep, deep question. That's not the claim here. The claim is that we know this to be true. It's known from science. Science is telling us this. That's false. Science is not telling us this. And that's we need to be careful here. Uh, many of my uh, viewers are not understanding this, not getting this part. Um, I'm not saying determinism is false. I'm not saying it's true. The claim that it is known to be true is a false claim. Okay, Big false claim there. Uh, same thing for this other idea that she uh, talked about. If you know the exact details of the particles in your brain and all the inputs, then you can calculate all the future states. The laws of nature apply to you and your brain because you're made of particles. Is this a scientific hypothesis? If so, fine. A green check mark. But that's not what they're saying. Again, this is the same level of conviction. We know this to be true. It's a known truth from science. False. That is a false claim. Science does not tell us that. There is not scientific evidence for this. It is false. And that's what's important to understand. These distinctions are very important. 
there is no scientific evidence for these claims. Uh, so again, we're back to this quote here. Um, this means in a nutshell that the whole story of the universe in every single detail was determined already at the Big Bang. We're just watching it play out. This is metaphysics. She's jumping to metaphysics. You can talk about natural laws. We do have natural laws. They're, they are described by differential equations. Yes, differential equations. But when you make the jump that all of reality is driven by these, you've jumped to metaphysics. This is not science. She's portraying it as science, and that's what determinists do. They portray this as science. It is not science. So what are the problems with this? Okay, there are several problems. I've talked about these in other videos. I'll just summarize them, summarize them here. To start with, uh, it's self-contradictory. If determinism is true, and our minds, our brains, are just a set of particles bouncing around matter and energy inside of our skull, then there's no basis for truth, no basis for knowledge. It's just simply a collection of molecules in our head. There's no guarantee of any truth value to anything anyone says including Hassenfelder uh, and, the, and the determinists. So their claim to know a truth is undercut by their um, claim that determinism is true. If determinism is a true, you can't know any truths. Uh, this bullet alone is enough to blow up the entire scheme. Secondly, we experience free will. If you want to talk about evidence for or against free will, we have mountains of evidence for free will. Even Hassenfelder admits there is evidence for free will in our experience. We experience it on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, the argument is that it's an illusion. Well, once you come up with a theory that um, starts discarding mountains of evidence as an illusion, you got a problem to, to start with, right? Um, that's what Darwin did with evolution. He was immediately had to start discarding evidence. Uh, you would like to have theories that follow the evidence, not discard the evidence. Now, what the argument here is that the free will um, experience that we have is an illusion. Well, maybe it is, uh, but there's a lot of evidence for it. You can't just simply ignore it. Uh, people say, well, you can't trust um, experience. That's not a good piece of evidence. Well, that's what we have here because you're making the claim about free will Free will is not something that you can measure with a measuring stick. So we have the, the, the evidence that we have on it because this is what you're making a claim on. Um, now, the reason why experience is, is not always a good um, piece of evidence is because, well, you don't have very many people, uh, two guys in the middle of the night. Uh, it doesn't occur for a very long time period. You know, for a brief glimpse, they saw something. Uh, they may have been groggy. Uh, it may have been drunk. Um, it's not something you trust, right? That's not this. This is everyone in the world continually experiencing free will. This is very powerful evidence. So right off the bat, we have, we have two problems. Uh, next, the, the entropic obstacles. Um, you have to have um, random events or natural laws um, creating incredible designs um, all the works of Beethoven and Bach and sh sh uh, Shakespeare, um, all of the um, molecular biology, the uh, geology, the, 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 the cosmos, I mean, the entropic obstacles are astronomical that you have to overcome. Um, the theory of evolution must be true, and that has failed over and over again. So there's all kinds of, of, of scientific problems on, on that score. Finally, it's just science does not explain many things. Uh, m much of our day-to-day our -day experience and the phenomena that we observe in the universe are not explained by science. I've done videos on all of these. So uh, several problems with this, aside from the fact that you, know, you, you don't have scientific evidence for this.